Hi, it's Chantal here. Welcome to Shanti Bloom. In this video, I'm going to be addressing the problem of laziness. Yes, laziness steals, it kills, and it destroys. And so I will share with you seven practical steps that will help you to stop laziness from killing your dreams, stealing your time, and from destroying your self-worth. Step number one, stop making excuses for your laziness. Change your mindset. You know, many times we give excuses that help us to feel comfortable in our lazy habits. How many times have you heard somebody say that, well, I think I was just lazy from birth, or maybe we are naturally lazy in our family. You know, it's one of those excuses. Nobody is born lazy. Think about some friends that you had growing up, maybe in your neighborhood or in class, who came across as lazy people. You know, but now when you look at them they are super productive what happened along the way that is just to tell you that nobody is born lazy those are just bad habits that we cultivate and we can overcome them another common excuse that i hear is that i'm not a workaholic this life is too short i need to give myself some rest I equally live by that principle. I believe in working hard and I also believe in resting. It's something that I'm presently doing my home, intentionally making time for rest. But the problem here is that when somebody is using this as an excuse, they begin to equate lazy habits to rest. Lazy habits and resting are two separate things. Rest is scheduled, laziness is not. You know, rest has a where, when, and what, you know? Like when, Saturday, Saturday, where? Where will I be in the morning? Maybe in bed, what will I be doing? Maybe sleeping into the morning. Where will I be in the afternoon? Maybe in the living room. What will I be doing? Maybe watching a movie. Evening, where will I be? I may be at the park. What will I be doing? Taking a walk. So you see that there's a time, there's a place, there's an activity. But on the other hand, laziness is spontaneous. There's no productivity. All it does is steal, kill, destroy, steal your time, kill your dream, and destroys your self-worth. Because if you're not productive, at the end of the day, you just feel like that day was wasted. The time went, you did not even rest, you did not do anything. And then you feel demotivated, you feel demoralized, and it just steals your joy. But on the other hand, rest. How many of you feel so motivated, you feel happy, you feel just energized after a good time of quality rest, not just quantity rest? So please do not use rest as an excuse to be lazy because those are two different things. You know, there are so many excuses we give today in order to stay away from doing the things we know we ought to do. Actually, let me ask you, what are some of the common excuses we give today for laziness? Please let me know in the comment section below. Step number two, imagine your ideal life without laziness. How will my next week look like if I was not lazy? How will my today look like? How will my next month look like if I was not lazy? And for you to have that clear picture, you will have to do some brain dumping. So you will need to get your pen and your paper or whatever device and do some brain dumping. Put down everything. You know, my next week would be my kids' closet organized if I'm not, you know, lazy. You know, I'll be able to return those missed calls. I'll be able to reach out and support some friends and family. I'll be able to finish reading that book. I'll be able to have some time for prayers and meditation. I will start inquiring about that business. You know, what will happen if you are not lazy? How will your next week look like? You have to put everything down. Now, when you've done this, it will bring you to step number three, which is to find out how your productivity benefits you. You know, if you do not ask this question, you will be left with this long to-do list that you have just dumped on the paper and it will just overwhelm you. And if you're not careful, you're going to slip back into laziness because you feel demotivated. But if you ask the why or you try to find out how you know, accomplishing this, your ideal week will benefit you. It will be a big motivator. For example, I talked about the closet. If I organize my kids' closet, then they are able to move into that closet, pick up what they need or put back their clothes without needing me. And so that saves me time and energy. If this week I have a consistent and effective prayer life, then I wake up every day with a sound mind because of the intimacy I share with God. And I equally step out of my house in confidence because of the clarity that I get from the place of prayer. That business that I'm thinking of starting, you know, I'm going to provide job opportunities for people, or maybe you are going to meet the needs of those who are consuming your product. So when you look at how your productivity benefits you or other people and glorifies God, you will be motivated to do it. 
Number four, set fewer achievable goals. Yes, you can dream big, dream very, very big. You know, I'm talking with a friend yesterday and she was joking with me and she said, you know, let our dreams scare us. Chantal, if your dream doesn't scare you, then go back to sleep and dream again, right? So it's okay to dream big, but make sure that the goals that you are setting so that you can realize those dreams, they are fewer and they're achievable, especially if you're trying to get out of laziness into productivity, then you have to take it one bite size at a time so that you do not get overwhelmed by the whole thing and you slip back into laziness. I still remember a time when I was so busy and I had allowed some things around the house to pile up. When I finally did some brain dumping to see how much I had to do, I was so overwhelmed. Like, when do I get to, you know, clean the closet, fix, the, you know, clean up the cabinets, this and that, you know, so many things. But when I used this approach of one bite size at a time, the process became easier. The benefit you have from doing one thing at a time is that you are effective at it because I took one morning and I said, this morning is just for this closet and I gave it my all. And then I used another day or another weekend to do another thing until I finished up everything. So it is effective. And another thing is that what you are motivated to do it because it is not overwhelming. Anything that overwhelms you tells your brain that it's not enjoyable. And so you will not want to go back there. And what happens? You go into laziness. But when you enjoy the process, you move over from laziness to productivity. Number five, schedule leisure time. You have to make time for fun. If you do not allocate time for leisure, you'll find yourself robbing Peter to pay Paul. And what do I mean by this? You're going to be stealing into your productive time because you want to satisfy that craving, that desire to go watch that movie or to scroll through social media. But if you know that you have put time for that, you've allocated a time for that, you will pay more attention or when you are doing another activity, you will give it your all knowing that there is time for all those other fun things that you want to do. I also like to encourage you that when you allocate time for fun, for leisure, try to make it at the end of a, a productive day, week or month. That way it feels like a reward or at least you're going to enjoy that moment, you know, with your brain not so cluttered with things that you have left undone. That way you are really able to enjoy that moment as a fun moment, guilt free. But also you should make sure that you do not put too much time in leisure right if you have 24 hours a day you don't want to have 20 hours of leisure and four hours of doing things that really matter so at least the time should be reasonable and try to stick to that time number six eat healthy exercise and rest you know tiredness and laziness are very closely related and we also know that what you eat, how much exercise you get, and how much rest you get will also determine how tired or not tired you're going to be. So what have you been eating? How much exercise have you been getting? How much rest have you been giving yourself? And again, remember, take it slowly. Don't think you're going to just move over from ice cream and pizzas over to a keto diet overnight. Not that it's impossible, but you want to take it slowly. And finally, number seven, my favorite, you have to practice this. It's going to really help you stop laziness. And this is to get a partner and you need a partner for three reasons. You know, I want to share with you this reason so that you will know how you are choosing this partner. You need a partner for motivation and accountability. I still remember uh, my school days. We used to agree to go to school, as a group to go and read. We did not sit and read in a group. When we get, we got to the library or to the school hall, we would look for different angles and we would read. But we agreed to go together and that was motivating and we also were accountable to one another. So get you that prayer partner, get that exercise partner, get that reading partner, get that business partner, whatever partner you need that you know will motivate you and will also hold you accountable. It's very important to take away laziness. You also need a partner for company. There are some things that yes, you do it by yourself, but there are just other things that when you do it in a group or with others, you know, it is more, you know, it is just more motivating and you are able to get away from that place of laziness to that place of productivity. Like um, when I have laundry to fold, you know, if it is a lot of laundry, I get everybody involved. I put Alexa and we're listening to songs. People put their, their, their favorite music. We listen, we sing and we fold, you know, and it makes it easier for me. Maybe if I had folded halfway and I'm like, you know, I'm tired, I'll fold the rest tomorrow. But the fact 
that I'm doing it with, you know, the rest of the family, it is more enjoyable. It makes things go smoother, you know, and at the same time, it's like I'm using one stone to shoot two birds because I'm teaching the kids how to fold. We're also having that. It's almost like a bonding time. And then my work is being, you know, cut into half. So it's just motivating and it helps me to do everything. And that is real productivity because I'm getting a lot done in little time. And lastly, you need a partner to depend on. But the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, that curse is the one who leans on the arm of flesh. But then when you go down to verse 7 of that same chapter, it says, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, the one whose confidence is in him. Is your confidence in flesh or is your confidence in the Lord? Are you trusting in the Lord? When you trust in the Lord, you are blessed. You will move away from laziness over to productivity because he's the one who has designed it in the first place. He says we are his handiwork created for good works. God cannot say that you have been created for good works and he did not put that ability on the inside of you. So let us go to God. Let us trust him. Say, Father, I have really been lazy. I'm struggling with laziness, but I know this is not who you have created me. I wasn't born lazy. I need your grace, I need your mercy, I need your wisdom, I need your direction. And you will be surprised at how God is going to move you over from that place of feeling stuck and lazy over to where you are going to be productive, you will bloom and you will flourish in your everyday life. So here are my seven hacks to stop laziness. I have used them, they have worked for me. What are your tricks to stop laziness? Please let me know in the comment section below. And while you're doing that, consider subscribing if you haven't done so thank you all so much for watching see you in the next